welcome to Garden Invaders, the show that in just a day makes garden miracles. I've been a busy bee creating a design for the owners, and we've got all the manpower, we've got all the materials in the van, but there's a catch, isn't there, Charlie? I'm afraid there is. They have to answer Charlie's questions to win the plants. It's beautiful around here, isn't it? Oh, Not a cloud in the sky. So quiet. It's really... Well, it was until you all got turned up. Boys, boys, the neighbours! Hey, keep the noise down, yeah. You can't make an omelette without breaking a few eggs, can you? That's very profound, Joe. <laughs> Today we're in Brood, which is where trainee nurse Lynn Jones lives. Her best friend Bernadette Farrell shares her Irish ancestry and passion for gardening. And the two of them travel the countryside, visiting garden shows and garden centres. But it's all gone a bit pear-shaped in the garden, as all her time has been taken up in studies. And in spite of her enthusiasm and hard work, the garden has finally defeated Lynn. It's a very shaggy garden, isn't it? I'm afraid so, yes. It has got rather out of hand just lately. And why is it, why is it so like this? Um, well, I'm just about coming to the end of my nursing course. So it's been a three-year course, and over the last three years, my time in the garden has gone become down. less and less and less. <laughs> yeah, yes. right. Great for wildlife, though. Oh, absolutely brilliant for wildlife, yes. We've got the lot here because we're so close to the fields. It's a beautiful area, isn't mm. it? So, you know, what would you envisage happening then? Would you like this all taken out nice and formal? Well, I don't want to lose too much lawn and I really, really do want a pond or a water feature right. to attract more wildlife. That's yeah. ideal for wildlife. Yeah. Have you any inspiration here, Joe? You're well, it's, looking it's got, no, it's got a really nice feel to it already. That, I think that's the thing. You know, the, for wildlife, you can hear the birds tweeting away here. So I think if we, we want to just... I know, we need to create some movement through the garden and just give it some definition. Mm. But I think, you know, the base is already here. You've got a lovely green backdrop all the way around. Mm. So we just um, just sort of got to, got to tweak it a little bit, really, and add stuff. So who's been oh swatting God. and doing homework for my very difficult questions? <laughs> I have, I'm afraid. What do you mean afraid? <laughs> well, I haven't done very much swatting. But you're a student, you must <laughs> know um... how to swat. <laughs> and so Bernadette, follow. I think that jacket might be coming off, Bernadette. It's very nice, so. but not yeah. gardening based. <laughs> Far too smart for gardening. <laughs> Look at us two. I'm now to agree with you. <laughs> so where are we doing the questions then, Lynn? Um, at one of my neighbours' houses, just which is at the bottom of the gate, number oh. 12. Well, we'll love you and leave you. I'm going okay. to do some questions, huh? See you later. <laughs> See you later. <laughs> These stairs that she's putting are really nice. I like them. Yeah. Yeah. Thank, Thank you, Tom. Thank you, Tom. This garden's just too sort of straight and it's not a good use of space. Yeah. What do you think? So, come with this plan. Okay. We're yeah. going to have a path sort of snaking all the way around through the garden. Okay. And then from the other steps that are really nice on the other side, it's just going to be a nice path linking up to this path. So, you know, two choices of two different ways to go. Then a, a water feature sort of with bog planting all the way around it will encourage loads of frogs and stuff. Absolutely, into the yeah. That'll work really nicely. And then some big trees. And then here we're going to have like a tree arbor. You know, you've got oh, to tie the trees in together so it's yeah. an archway that you walk through. And, and maybe a little seating area over in the shady, sort of woodlandy style. Yeah, it's going to look absolutely gorgeous. What do you think? Isn't it? Absolutely. It's going to look gorgeous. Yeah. 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 Okay. I've got some boots for you. <laughs> Cheers, Paul. Thank you. Um, oh. <laughs> that's that's what we call sensible footwear. On it. Sensible know. footwear. What's the <laughs> put them on. Put your t-shirt on. Invader okay. for a day. Yeah, wear it with pride and get stuck in. All right, we'll do. Nice okay. one. Okay. There's a lot of turf to lift in this garden, and unfortunately the turf cut has just broken. But, rather than hold ourselves up, we've got another one on the way. We've got to lift it by hand, haven't we? Look at this. It's amazing what you can do if you get them all focused. Oh, what a sweet little garden. It's lovely, isn't it? Absolutely beautiful. And we've got some great plants here. I mean, the trees are the first group, and they're really key to your garden. I have to say, natives that will encourage lots of wildlife, give you a bit more shade, but not too much. But yeah. Fairly key. I know Joe's quite keen on those. <laughs> I've got to do my best then. Yeah. And the shady area you've got, these plants will all be happy in the shade, ferns and yeah. hostas. And I know you've got quite a lot of cottage plants. But yes, I have. You can't have too many, hey? No. So lots more colour there. Lots more lupins and delphiniums. Yeah. No problem. Lots of lavender. And then 
this group here, not to give away anything that's going on in the garden, but these are all pond and bog plants. And then over here, the finishing touches. Beautiful table, wildlife, nesting boxes. Can you imagine sitting and relaxing in that? Easily, Charlie, easily. Mm. That's Bernadette's area, though, so how's her horticultural knowledge? Not good. Oh, dear. Mm. Right, so these are the trees for question one, and they are fabulous. This is a crab apple here. This one's called Gorgeous, and it is very, very pretty. It's got white, blush pink flowers in the spring, mm. followed by these fruits. Yeah. An ideal tree for a small garden, doesn't get too big. And we got some birch. Now, these aren't silver birch, they're purple birch. And the wonderful thing about birch trees is the leaves are tiny, so they give a dappled light, which allows you to underplant them. Yeah. Got two different types of sorbus here, or mountain ash, it's called yes. as a common name. The mountain ash because the leaves are like an ash tree. And then this here is a hawthorn, but it's an ornamental hawthorn. It's a double pink one, and it flowers in the spring, but also again slightly in the autumn. So you get a sort of double whammy with the flowers. Very pretty tree for the garden. Now these trees are really important to Joe's design. Okay, question one. What name? is given to the delicately flavoured young shoots of asparagus. Are they runners, crowns, or spears? Spears. No hesitation there. I don't think so. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> Fantastic, Joe will write you now. Ed, yes. Paul, Ben. Peace and quiet, hear myself think now. The great thing about this garden, we've got lovely soil, so we can grow some lovely plants. At the same time, it makes digging easy. So once it's rotivated all up, we can start digging this path. This path leads from the existing steps through the garden. It's all just sort of free form shapes, nothing too linear here. And if we're going past this area of grass that we're gonna leave long, it's gonna encourage wildlife and just give that natural look. And on the other side, we're gonna have another path that's gonna meet this and it's gonna to go towards the back of the garden. And here we're gonna have a circular gravel area, a nice pause in the middle of the garden. And there's gonna be some trees growing over. Oh, hang on a minute. Lou, have we won those trees yet? Yes. Nice one. We've won the trees, which is very important. So we've got to have some height here. Just natural trees, loads of berries, encourage the birds into the garden. And then we're on the move again. Charlie's going to do a bog garden sort of water feature here. Again, bring the toads in, bring the frogs into the garden, all planted around here. And then towards the back, we're recycling this paving. This is coming on very quickly. Paving was over there. We're going to make a nice shady seating area at the back of the garden to just survey the whole view. And it's nice and cool on a hot day like this. Student, what are you studying? Nursing. Nursing. Mm. Is, is that something you've always wanted to do? Um, not really. Uh, I think it's my last career, probably. And I was just drawn to it and applied, and they took me. So, what was your other career then? I was a licensee. Oh, so you ran a pub? I kept a pub in the village. Yes. Oh, lady after my own heart. There. <laughs> We've got some really fabulous plants here for the shady area mm -hmm. at the bottom of the garden. We've got the, this fern, which is known as an ostrich fern, but its name is Matusia struthereopteris, which is fantastic, isn't it? I think it's Sounds great. like a dinosaur, Charlie. <laughs> and then we've got hostas, which partial shade. They've got the flower spikes that come up on them. And this one's called Gold Medallion. And then that one over there, Evergreen Shrub, that one's by Burnham Tynus Purpurea because the, the new shoots are purple. Mm -hmm. in the springtime. It also has white flowers in the spring, which is great, but followed by berries. So again, another shrub that will be very good for your birds yes, and things. Yes, bird. So are you ready for the question? Yes. Question number two. Curled pondweed is an asset to gardeners because it puts what back into the water? Is it nitrogen, chlorine or oxygen? It could put nitrogen back if it was decaying, I suppose. Yeah, but we're hopefully not putting dead plants in our pond. But I think it's oxygen. You're right. Fantastic. <laughs> Thank God. Oh, I think we'll get Lou to get these plants. What? Well, it's not my fault, is it? We had a second turf cut to turn up, and that's broken as well now, so it's all got to be done by hand. That's why they're looking so grumpy. Come on, carry on. This 
halves coming on really nicely. Nick's putting the edging in and it's defining the whole garden, getting some nice movement and you can really see how this garden's gonna work now. Now this edging's great, it's aluminium, you can get it in different colours but we're using a very toned down natural colour to fit in with this garden well. And you can bend it to any shape which is great because we've got a circle there. And then you just use these pegs into that slot, whack it in with a hammer, straight into the ground and it really is very, very rigid stuff. And on the inside of it, using this landscape fabric, it's great stuff. It stops the weeds coming up through it, but it lets the water penetrate so it doesn't puddle. And on top of it, using these really nice chippings, this is called Derbyshire Grey. And it's a nice textural path, but easy to lay, but a nice texture which will be set off by all the planting around it. So well pleased with that path. And over here, We've reused some of the existing slabs that are over there. I think they're council slabs. They're three foot by two foot, really chunky, about two inches thick, so they're very heavy. But what that means is you only have to lay them onto a sand bed. Don't need too much cement in it because it's a sandy base soil, so it's well compacted underneath, and they just go straight down. So that's done pretty quick. Now these cottage plants, they're all going to want a fairly sunny position in the garden. Mm -hmm. So we've got lupins, which are great because you get these tall spires of pea flowers and come in loads of different colours. They are slightly prone to aphids, but if we're going for a wildlife garden, you're going to have all those blue tits and ladybirds that mm -hmm. are going to eat all those off and keep the numbers down. And something else, delphiniums, slugs and snails love them. So we yes. hope that your, your starlings are going to be very busy in the garden. And then something I really love, lavender. Yes. Aromatic foliage Beautiful. and flowers. This one, once it's finished flowering, you need to trim it round. Otherwise, they go a bit straggly and woody mm. and sort of break in half. Again, very sunny site and a free draining soil. They don't like too rich a soil because it makes them very leggy and the scent's not as strong then but would all be perfect for your garden, wouldn't they? Yes, they're all beautiful, Charlie. You're doing very well. Oh, thank you. You're sort of a hundred percenter at the moment. <laughs> Let's see if it carries on. Okay. To which family of vegetables does the radish belong? Is it a legume, a brassica, or a gourd? Okay, no, brassica. No, it's gourd. No, I'm sorry, it's a brassica. Do you think about when they go to seed, radishes go to seed, they have that brassica family flower. I'm sorry about that. Well, I'll go and tell Joe, but I don't think Never he'll mind. be devastated. You stay and do a bit of okay. spotting. Oh, look at this, passed down, nice edging. And Bernadette's working away. Hello, Charlie. Looking slightly <laughs> different than this morning. Slightly. Look how dirty you are, my love. No. <laughs> so what have you been up to? You've still got nails. Yeah, still got them. Yeah. Just, just a little bit dirty. So what have you, you been doing today then? Um, well, when the... Is it the rotavator that cuts the oh, grass? You're very technical so, on yes, your garden. Yes, yes. The rotavator that cuts your grass. Yeah. It's called no, a mower or a oh, all right, then. No, one of the things that cuts it up. Oh, a turf up. lifter. Yeah, a turf lifter. When that I can't down, wait I for your there. question a bit I later. <laughs> <laughs> no. So, do you think she's going to like it? She's going to absolutely be delighted. She really, really will be delighted. Is it? From nice? what I can see from now, she's. I mean, it's good now. So, right till the end product, it's going to be absolutely gorgeous, I reckon. And is it nice to do something for a friend? Lovely, really, yeah. especially for her. Yeah, yeah. And Mr Swift must yeah. be ecstatic <laughs> yes. because we've got the trees. Oh yeah, I'm so pleased about these trees. I was really worried. If we didn't have these trees, this garden's going to look very flat. There's yeah. a major feature, lots of height. Beautiful trees mm. as well. Very pleased. So this means that will help you get over the slight problem that she didn't get the cottage plants. Oh, I didn't know that. Ah. I know that now. Now what about the, um, the boggy plants? Have they been done yet? Uh, no, we're just about to do that. Why are they important? Very important. Part of your project. Oh! Yeah. oh. I see. Well, you're the water woman. There, but there's not going to be any cheating, I promise you. Oh, no. go on. No, yeah, I'm you... not. No, no. Oh, we can't just have trees. We need more than just trees in a garden. Squatting and relaxing in the chairs. Yes, I'm afraid so, Charlie. This one's definitely got my name on it. Well, I hope Bernadette gets the question right later because it might not have your name on it at all. <laughs> she's got to win it first. <laughs> oh, no. I'm talking of Bernadette. She's looking slightly different than she did this morning, Big I have grubby, to yeah. say. Very grubby, yes. Nice. <laughs> She'll love that. 
Now we've got some lovely plants over here for question four. OK. Now they're all pond or bog plants. We've got Lobelia cardinalis, which has got those dark purple leaves. Mimulus ringens, it's got those sort of snapdragon lilac flowers. That can go in the water down to about four inches below the water surface mm -hmm. and it's totally hardy. It will die down every year, but it will come back up every year. And then we've got the Shiza stylus coccinea Mrs. Hegarty, which is a red lily-like flower. And it's great because it flowers very, very late in the summer and it'll keep going all the way through to September, October if we have no frosts. And one of my favourite bog plants, which will also grow in damp, shady areas, is Trollius. This one mm. is known as globe flower and you can see why, because of those really round flowers with the petals all curling in on itself. Now, the next question for these wonderful plants is a visual one. OK. So it's to do with these plants here. We've got Tagetes, or marigolds. Mm -hmm. We've got Lavandula hidco, which is lavender. And we've got Digitalis purpurea, which is foxglove. Mm -hmm. Now, one of these plants produces a form of treatment for heart disease. Mm -hmm. Do you know which one? Now, you have a slight advantage here, don't you? If I get it wrong, I'm going to get the sack. <laughs> well, you won't be passing your uh, course. Uh, Digitalis. Well done. Fantastic. <laughs> but you're not finished. You might have got nearly all the plants, but we've got a little project for you set up out the front. So come on, okay. keep going. I'm so glad that Lynn won these trees because I'm building an arbor out of them. I've got six trees around this circle and tying them in together at the top here. And they're gonna to need, to, need to be pruned quite regularly to be kept quite tight because they're gonna develop into quite chunky trees. But we've got loads of different varieties here, which is what makes it exciting. So it's like a mixed hedge, but sort of in an arbor. And the idea is you walk all the way through it. So you've got height in the garden instantly, acts as a divide as well. From the front of the garden, you can't see the back, which is great. And at the back of the garden over here, there's some nice wild planting and we're gonna leave that. We're gonna give it some definition by putting a railway sleeper wall in and just dog legging it back. But the nice thing about it is you can just perch at the back here and admire the view. Now your neighbors have got some very, very nice garden furniture. Uh huh. And Joe would like some in the garden as well, but in your garden. So your little project. Oh, is... you're joking, Charlie. Why? Oh, no. Are you not very handy? Um, with screwdrivers, no. Well, so this all goes together. There are fittings in the true flat pack tradition. There are instructions. Charlie, was... this looks like Chinese. Bernadette was very keen. Oh, no, not my she old said... toolbox. <laughs> you use it a lot. <laughs> you could have dusted it. OK, so if you could pop all that together, that would be fantastic. No problem at all. Um, it's a bench, not a... Yes, it's a... Yes. How long have I got? Well, not too long. We've got a garden finish, but you need a Can flat come screwdriver. And you also need a Phillips screwdriver. Thank you. And a posi drive. Thank you. And just keep the pressure good as you're turning them nice and slowly and read all the instructions. OK, no problem. There are only minimal instructions. Charlie. Yeah? There you go. Well, Dug a hole for you. What's that meant to it's be? It's nice and neat, isn't it? Oh, yeah. Well, it's going to be a bog garden. It you're, is. You're going to work your wonders. With what? With, uh, watch this. You know they call them invaders. Watch this. There we go. Wow. We have a sump, we have a pond liner, and we have some lovely marginal boggy plants. Have your shovel. I like using a spade, mate. Get out of here. Yeah. Oh, thank goodness for that. Okay, Luke, turn the hose off now, mate. This is our little frog pond in the centre of the bog garden. I've put a liner in underneath. Now, a lot of people bring the liner right up to the surface of the soil, which actually ends up creating a marsh. So what you want to do is line a hole two thirds of the way up, 
put the soil back in, mixing in loads and loads of compost because bog plants like a really rich soil. And as this is going to be a pond for frogs, I'm going to rest a few rocks in so they can get in and out really easily. Okay, okay. I know it looks messy, you know, long grass like that, but it's gonna be wild flowers. But you've got to be patient with these things, they don't happen instantly. So what we're doing is raking out all the thatch, yeah, and that's going to be taken off. And the same when you mow it, you only mow it about once a year in September, okay, but whenever you cut it, take all the cuttings off, because otherwise they're going to feed the soil. And actually something like this, like it's a very, very poor soil. That's going to encourage wildflowers into it, but just to help it along a little bit, we're going to use some of this, the wildflower mixture. So in the bald patches in here, we're just going to get a handful. It doesn't need to be sown too densely at all. This has got wild grasses and loads of wildflowers and really gently, just like that, not too dense. It's got like plantain and sanguisorba and field scabious and oxide daisies mixed in with a load of native grasses as well. Next year it's going to be up here going to get cut once a year and it's going to be brilliant for encouraging our wildlife and also it's going to give some nice height to look through when you're down here. I think it's going to work well. There we go Lynn, all finished. Oh Ben, that's wonderful, but was that the last screw? It was the last screw. I'm sorry I've got some bits left over. Excuse me, what's going on here? Very nice bench, I've got some Thanks lovely cushions for it. Oh, wonderful. I've got this feeling you did all that and you just sat there and pointed. <laughs> no, I did all. do a bit, Charlie. Right, you get back to the garden. I don't know, what are you like? The Irish charm, Charlie. It's a very nice bench, though. It looks nice absolutely and shady gorgeous, area. yes. It looks yeah. very comfortable. Well, that's about you finished now that you've slaved so hard <laughs> over putting the bench together. You can uh, pop back and I think you ought to put the kettle on for me to do something at least. I'll take those two downs. OK. And no peeking out the window. No, promise. See you later on. I'll carry it back, don't you worry. This is one of my all-time favourite ferns. It's called Matutsia struthiopteris, or its easy name is the shuttlecock fern or the ostrich fern. What I like about it is in spring you get very, very upright, almost vase-like shape, and the fronds just slowly, slowly unfurling. A really good plant to use in shade. And another great plant for shade is a hosta, and this one's called Golden Medallion. What I like about it is it really brightens up the dark part of the garden, and they can stay there for ages. Long-lived plants last 30 to 40 years in the same place. But I've planted a group of them, and all together they'll make some real impact. One of my favourite plants in this garden is the foxglove, and it's already here. It's not surprising because they self-seed everywhere, and look, there's a bee on it, and they use the little lip of the flower there is a landing pad, and they climb up the throat, get the pollen, and then go around pollinating all the other ones in the garden. Well, Bernadette, you've been working hard, and it's come to that time of day. Look at this fantastic table, yeah. lovely table, bat boxes, bird feeders, candles, bottle of wine, even some night lights. And you sit down, you feel how comfy these chairs are. They nice. Superb. Now I have to say, Lynn has got her heart set on this. Mm. So all the brawn and all the work is over. It's now <laughs> time for the brains. By what common name are the flowers of the Impatiens family commonly known? Some people call them Impatiens. Are they Busy Lizzies, Fuchsias or Lupins? I'm going to go for... Aye. So that's the busy, busy lizzies. It's a pure guess. <laughs> well, Lynn's going to be very happy with you, you're right. Because <laughs> she has got her heart oh. sold on these. Do you feel a bit better now? Yeah. <laughs> My heart's going down to the dozen. <laughs> well, it's OK, so you can go and let it rest right. now. You can pop back and inside. You're allowed to put your nice shoes back on and your nice jacket, <laughs> but don't tell her that you've won it and don't okay. tell her anything about the garden. Okay. Off you go then. All right, thank you.
Helene. Uh huh. What was your garden like this morning when we turned up? It was in a poor, poor state. It's a um, very sick garden, Charlie. Take your hands down. Don't open your eyes yet. I think we ought to let her have a look, don't you? I think so. Off you go then. I'm speechless. <laughs> the whole perspective has changed. So you've got your pergola, but it's a. It's an arbor. It's actually. an arbor made out of trees. You can see why Joe needed the trees so oh, I needed much. those trees because I'm so glad you won those trees. Gorgeous. How did you do that? <laughs> if you watch the program, he explains. <laughs> Hell, what's happened to the lawn? Well, yeah. Yeah. Now Joe's going to We didn't want to just put a normal lawn back in there because it's not great for encouraging wildlife. So we put, put this meadow and just let it grow, let it grow, and don't trample all over it. No, we won't. no we won't. I can't believe it's my garden. I feel as if I've walked into somebody else's garden. <laughs> <laughs> well, you haven't. It is yours. Yeah. And somebody uh, got that fantastic table and chairs. <laughs> oh, you didn't. <laughs> I did. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you star. Oh, she never lets me down. Dear. We're a good team. And that, that bench you made, well, actually, hold on, who made? Oh, Ben, ben made. Ben made, <laughs> yes. yes. Just there, so you've got an area to sit in the shade, yeah. an area to picnic at the end there. There is a pond and a bog garden. You can't quite see it from here, but it's definitely there. Charlie, Charlie made it. It's fantastic. So you can go and have a quick look. look. Go and have a quick, look. quick butcher's look. Do you think she's going to enjoy this? I think she's going to be so pleased. Charlie, it's fabulous. So do you think the frogs will like it? I hope so, yes. <laughs> I think it's absolutely brilliant. It's going to be a really well-loved garden, don't you? Yeah, you know they're going to look after it. I do. Absolutely. And I want to know, Joe, how did you arrange the rain to turn up just now? Oh, I just have that touch, you know? You're at one with nature. Oh, I am, I know, absolutely. See you next time. Bye.